My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back once again to Transport Fever 2. We're currently starting sat above the Okanagan Lake, the town of Westbank over on the left hand side of the lake, and the town of Kelowna just to our right. Now what I'd like to get done today is some more freight operations in and around the Okanagan Lake. Previously we'd started supplying the two factories down here with the planks and the steel that they require for production. And the next thing I would like to do is start to get these machines that will eventually start being produced, shipped up to the goods freight yard up here, and then delivered on into Armstrong first of all. We already supply Armstrong with a supply of food, so if we can also start hitting this machinery demand as well, then we should start seeing some pretty nice growth in Armstrong. As we can see, we've got our first high-rise building on the map, I believe. It's the first one I've noticed anyway. And that's here in Armstrong. And it's towering above the current skyline of the city. However, I'm sure that will change in the not-too-distant future as more and more of these high-rises start to appear. So let's press on. So we do have planks and steel being delivered down here, or we will do eventually once the trains start making their first deliveries. But the delivery lines via the trucks are all set up, even if they're not hauling anything at this moment in time. So what we're going to do now is set up a line heading in the reverse direction from the Kelowna Industrial Yard over to our freight yard just north of West Bank. We'll use this colour as it does seem very similar to the machinery icon, so that's quite handy. And we'll go for the usual setup. We know the score by now. There we go. And if we just name this the machinery haulage, and this is going from Kelowna over to West Bank. So that's ready to go. One thing I do want to do that I have forgotten thus far is to use a few waypoints in this area just to stop our trucks from doing a loop on the platform instead they'll take the opposite exit or entrance to which they came through and then head back down this little side road here so before we do anything further let's do that now so as you can see our lumber haulage the trucks are currently turning around on their platform and then doubling back on themselves however if we tell them to go via that waypoint that avoids that. Likewise, our steel haulage trucks are coming in, turning around and then dropping off. So what we can do is send them in via that waypoint like so. And then last of all, we'll do the same as we did with our lumber trucks for the machinery haulage trucks. Although I put that in the wrong place. There we are, that's where we need it to be. And then there's no turning around on the platform inside our little industrial yard there. So now that we have the line set up to haul the machinery, let's go ahead and get ourselves some cargo trucks to actually complete the task. And we'll stick with the Benz trucks for the increased speed, even if they do have a lower capacity. And we'll start with just eight, I believe. So we'll color them appropriately and then assign them to the line just like so so once the machinery does start being produced these will now haul it back over here and then what we want to do is get a train line from this freight yard here heading into Armstrong just like so and we want to use a different platform here because at the minute we have three different lines all sharing the same platform. So if we send him to platform number two, and this is that sort of light grey colour, and we'll get the usual setup done nice and quickly. So that's the orders now set up. Now it's just for the line name itself. This is the machinery freight line heading from West Bank to Armstrong. What we also want to do is the food freight line that also uses this station is we want to put that onto platform two as well. So we'll manage the line and at Armstrong freight, you're heading into platform two. My logic here is that platform one 
is to supply the industries and platform two is to drop off the industries. So at platform one, our trains could be waiting for up to 60 seconds for a full load as per their orders. Whereas on platform two, it's more a case of coming in, unloading and then leaving straight away. So if they're all using, or if there was an intermix between goods being brought in and goods being shipped out on the one platform, then for example, a machinery freight train may be waiting while a wheat freight train is loaded up and that's just going to slow things down just a little. So to try and avoid that, we've got them on to separate platforms depending what their orders are when they get into the station. The last thing we're going to want to set up now is a delivery line for the machinery itself. So we're going to go from Armstrong Freight and we'll quickly set this up before we do anything else. Now we haven't got an unload point yet, so we need to do build one of those in Armstrong. And I think if we have it on this little side street here, that gives us a decent enough coverage. And it also keeps it out of the way of our bus lines. So now we can return to our line manager and add that station in to this line. And quickly name it up. And this is machinery delivery for Armstrong. Although there is only one A in machinery. So let's just correct that. There we go. So now we can get the trucks ready to go on this line. Once again, we'll stick with the bends for the higher speeds. And I think six, no, we'll go for eight. Again, color them in and set them away. So for now, they are going to be running empty because there's no train running on the machinery freight line, nor is there any machinery at this point being produced. We're still waiting on our first load of lumber to be brought down here. In the meantime, however, we may as well get our train up and running so it's ready to go straight away. So for the locomotive for this train, I think we'll go for the Mikado for the higher power rating that it possesses. I think the MILW is probably overkill for such a local service. So yes, we will go for the Mikado. And then we want the boxcars for this service. And once again, we'll aim for around about 120 as our starting capacity. And we can always expand on that later if we find we're not keeping up with production over in West Bank. So let's purchase that. For now, it will just be the one train. And then if we zoom out, I head over to Armstrong so the line is now visible in our field of view. Assign it to the line. Okay, so unfortunately you're unable to find a path to the stop. Okay. Did I perhaps choose the wrong depot for this? Let's see here. It should be one of these. So if I just go through each one in turn. Yes, it looks like I did opt for one of... Yes, I chose a wrong depot there. So let's sell that train and instead we'll choose a depot that is more suitable and we'll just quickly repeat the train setup that we just put together. Okay, that's better. Now we should be able to access the line much better. So eventually now we'll start seeing machinery being brought into Armstrong. As we can see here, the trucks are looping around and that could start having an impact on our bread delivery trucks that are heading into Armstrong as well. So what we'll quickly do is amend this line. So instead of coming in this way and turning around, instead they'll come down this street and via this waypoint here. So let's manage the line and you want to go that way. As we can see, our platform for the food is now full up. And we don't have another truck on the way that I can see. Oh no, there's one here. But I think we could get away with having a lot more trucks delivering the food. At the minute we only have five. I think we'll double that to ten. So that's doubled our capacity and our throughput. We'll have to make sure our trains can keep up with the trucks now. I'm sure they will be able to. So that's the first task of the episode taken care of. Delivering the machinery over into Armstrong don't think we've had a lumber delivery. Oh yes, we have our first lumber delivery just coming in now. Looking very empty, I must say, but once things kick into full production, 
hopefully we'll start seeing much more loaded or much more fully loaded trains coming down this way to supply both the tool factory and the machinery factory over the lake. So hopefully now that will kickstart production once those planks get delivered down by the road vehicles. We do have plenty of lumber waiting on the platform here as we can see. We also have a train unloading even more logs to be produced into planks. How many trains do we have running on the lumber freight line? We have two, so we know one has just made a delivery. Is that the one we have just been to visit? No it isn't. He must have already dropped off as well. But now they should have more logs, sorry, they should have more planks to pick up when they do return to the sawmill. We'll keep an eye on these two. Yes, we've got our first production of tools. Nothing for machinery just yet, but once the planks start arriving... Oh no, we do have some production as we can see. We have our first unit of machinery actually awaiting for collection. So they are splitting the planks between them hopefully somewhat evenly and because we know we have tools being produced as well even though they're not being shipped anywhere at this time we may as well set up a tool shipment line over to the train station and we can start delivering tools over in British Columbia it does look like there's only one town that requires the tools that I can see and I think that is Vernon indeed that looks to be the case so we may as well start a delivery line for Vernon as well. So let's get a new line from there over to there. You're hauling tools, which is a sort of pale blue colour, perhaps like that. Or is it more of a silver? Well, I'll go for the pale blue, because otherwise you might have a hard time distinguishing between the steel, the machinery and the tools. So we'll use that colour for this line. And we want to make sure we're going the right way around the station, so we'll use the waypoint now. So that's all set up and sorted. This is going to be the usual setup that we're all very familiar with. There we go. And this is the tools haulage line heading from Kelowna into West Bank. So that's set up and ready to go, so we can get the vehicles purchased so they're running ready. Again, we shall go for eight for now. So that's that leg taken care of. Now for the rail line section. And you want to come into Vernon. Now let's see, how are we going to get you over there? Because at the minute, you can only head that way. So we're going to need a connection from somewhere around here into this line. And then we'll also need to expand this station and include a cargo platform or two as well. Because we're going to want the tools and the bricks eventually being delivered down here. So before we do anything else, let's get the tracks sorted first of all. So as discussed, we want to branch off before this junction work here. We'll likely have, oh, it's going to be a bridge over the Okanagan Lake before connecting into the passenger line. So let's see if we can get this done nice and easily. So you need to rise up just so you don't have the strange artifact on the junction in terms of the raised ballast that looks better you can go straight for a bridge we're going to need one anyway once we cross the Okanagan Lake so we may as well start the bridge early so that's where you're going to be heading off from and then from here we didn't want you to keep on climbing there really but we want to make sure there is enough height clearance on this line so that any ships we purchase at the shipyard here can still navigate this stretch of the Okanagan Lake. So yes, that does keep the rivers open for us. 
and it also leaves us in a pretty nice position to connect into the passenger line as well. So oh, I don't like the way the bridge kinks to the right, to the left and then crosses the lake. Let's see if we can just straighten that up just a bit. And in fact maybe if we take that back there as well. This might give us a straighter run. Yes, well it's curved, it's not straight. But it isn't kinking left and right anymore, which is a lot better. So that's that taken care of. Now as you can see at the moment, this does head into single track. And this bridge is single tracked as well. So we probably want to go to expand this to a double track stretch of line. So let's quickly pause it. We'll take care of the dual tracking first of all, and then we'll get it all connected in to the cargo line that we've just started. Okay, so let's see here. So if we... Hmm, now that's giving us a very strange end to the bridge there, which I don't like. That's better. Can we get across nicely? Yes. And then what we need to do is come over there. And then we need to come off again ready for the new platform that's going in place. So if we put the new platform down now. So we need a set of tracks and we need the catenary. And I think we'll have it like that, so it won't be as long as our existing tracks, but that should be okay. Get the cargo platform down, like that. We can close that menu now, go back to our regular track lane tool. And we need to, if we can, bring this in somewhere in here, if there's the room for it, which there is. So let's see, let's just plan this out in our mind now. So this is all dual track, so this is all one way here. So you'll be on the right. If we make that a double slip switch there, then our passenger trains can use a double slip switch and come down here into their platform, which is okay. Our freight line will go up here, which is okay. On the way back, our passenger line will just go completely straight, so that shouldn't have any issues. Our freight trains are going to come this way, this way, and they will be on the wrong side of the tracks here. So we need to get a way to get this track connected to this track. Now I'm hoping we can do this easily without messing up this bridge here. Let's see. Okay, so we can't do it there. Perhaps if we make it part of the bridge, no. Perhaps a little further back, let's see. So we can get the connection. Does the bridge look good? It still looks fine to me. So these will be two bi uh, bi-directional tracks now. And then after this switch is when they go back to one direction. So we'll make that clear with a signal just before the switch. And we'll put a clearing signal there as well for anything that might be waiting to set off. And then it's just a case of putting some blocks down here because we're going to have a few trains running down here in the near future. We can unpause the game now that we've got that done. But now we just need to see about getting this merged into this passenger line nicely. So that looks as far as we can go there. The junction isn't that bad. We can, yes, we can make a little better just by raising a hump in the track just a touch and into there. So then we want a signal there and we'll put one a little bit further back for our passenger trains. That way they should take priority over the freight trains and we'll put a clearing signal just prior to the entrance of the tunnel. And then we'll put just one or two blocks over here as well. We'll need a clearing signal this side of the junction, so just there. And then a handful of blocks down here. 
and then we want to do some signal work around this junction so like that and like that that can act as a clearing signal that way there's a clearing signal that way and there's a clearing signal that way so that should now give us a decent enough connection over from West Bank into Vernon so let's try this now yes indeed it's doing exactly what we predicted it would do let's give it the same color and we'll set it all up now so that's the loading orders now set up it's just time for the name so that's tools freight west bank to vernon that is fine so now we can in fact no we can't get the train yet although we could but it wouldn't be doing much at this time what we need to do is get a delivery line set up from this station into Vernon itself. So for that we're going to need a truck station. And I think if we put it there, we're going to have a connection, we can see that. And it also gives us room to expand the, to expand the platforms and manually draw our road connections in so that we don't have any traffic lights being produced here. So let's connect that in there. We need another exit on this side, although it's probably not a bad idea to expand these even more, just so a full capacity train can fill up the platform without wasting too many precious cargo units. And then we'll have the exit on that side. And then what we want to do is come around here. Higher capacity road there, please. That's better. And then what we'll do is we'll make this into a T-junction. Like so. Just check we still have the connection to the station. Yes, we do, and it does include the cargo platforms. However, I think we are going to need a cargo building to get this activated and working correctly. So what we'll do is over here, we'll go to configure, cargo buildings, and we'll have a large building on this side just here. And just for decoration, we'll have a smaller one, like so. And then if we really need to in the future, we could have a short platform here. Although you wouldn't fit many trains on a short platform there, so that might end up being a little siding just for decoration. But for now, let's get this a road connection. So that's connected there. And then I think if we come out this way before heading over like that. Everything's all connected up. The cargo side of this station should now be serviceable as well. So that's brilliant. That's all fine. That's good. That's what we want. Let's just rename this to Vernon Cargo Exchange. And now we can get the drop-off point for Vernon. So our tools are located up this way. So where would be an ideal place? We could put it opposite the bus stop there. And then what we'll do, just to make sure they don't then U-turn up here, we'll use a waypoint to navigate the trucks back through Vernon. So now we'll set the delivery line up. Okay, so they've already decided to go around that way anyway. So no concerns there. So that's the loading orders set up for Vernon. Let's now name the line. Tools delivery Vernon. So let's get the trucks purchased and ready to run. Again, we'll go with the Benz and we'll go for six. There we go. I think they are looping on the station by the looks of it. Yes, they are. But what we can do is, on their way in to pick up, we can send them around this way. So for that, we're going to need yet another waypoint, and we'll put it just there. Return to the line manager, 
after Meadow Street you want to come that way and that keeps it neat and tidy and they also then don't start crossing over one another so that's an added bonus there so now we can purchase the train to start hauling the tools over to Vernon so let's do that now so just make sure we click one of the right depots this time we'll go for that one there purchase the train I dare say for this we might even get away with an Atlantic it's not a long distance haulage at all the prairie is probably a little bit underpowered and saving 30,000 per year isn't going to make or break anything so we'll go for the Atlantic again we need the box car for this and I think we'll go for 120 that seems to be the standard that we've opted for lately so we'll stick with that and then get into position where we can see the line on our screen there it is tools freight west bank to vernon selected the right depot the train is now on the way so we should start seeing some tools being dropped off onto one of our platforms here for onward delivery so that's one half of vernon's cargo demands taken care of Armstrong has both their demands taken care of although at the minute I don't think they're getting a supply of machinery because things haven't had time to kick into full production yet. So as you can see the amount of trucks we have are now outstripping the supply of food into Armstrong. So let's just have a look at our food freight line so we only have the one train running this. It now might be time to either double up this train or increase this train's length. Although at the minute they are waiting on a supply of grain at the food processing plant as we can clearly see. But we do have one on the way. So we have three trains running the wheat freight which is probably enough I would think and it is quite profitable. But we might want to increase the length of these trains. And we also might think about swapping them for the Mercado as well. So if we go to this and just have a little play about here. Perhaps if we went to 180 with the Mercado. That actually does give us a little speed boost as well. It is going to make it more expensive on the maintenance of course. But hopefully the increased capacity will offset that. So this is a little bit of trial and error. But I think it's going to work fine. If nothing else we're definitely going to increase the wheat supply over here. So the food delivery train shouldn't have to wait around as long. Or as is the case right now run partially loaded. As discussed in the previous episode, we can see we're starting to have backlog issues here while trains are waiting to come on and off of their respective platforms. So it might mean that this needs to be reworked somewhat and rethought out to try and make it that little bit more efficient if we can. So this train currently waiting is the coal delivery train and he was actually waiting for a coal delivery train to clear. So there's nothing we can do about that. The only thing we could do is try and space them out a little better. But this is obviously now blocking off one of the wheat freight trains awaiting to come into platform. And it's also holding up two of our trains waiting to depart. Let's just have a look where everybody is heading. So is there a way we could get where's the wheat train we could bring this off a little sooner down along the side here and then connect it in just here I think that would work to do that we'll have to get rid of this little siding that I constructed which isn't really doing anything anyway so there's no danger in getting rid of that just to there should be fine. Oh, obviously the little bit there as well. So if we head back here, perhaps just after this set of signals. And 
Okay, that's how oh, the signal is interfering out there. And then if we make this now quad track from this point like this. The idea now being the wheat trains can come down this way. So if there's other trains in and around their platform space, hopefully these will be able to access their platform freely and without too much interruption. Now unfortunately having a little difficulty because of this junction from the depot, so we'll have to get rid of that and rework that. But given that we're not purchasing any trains at the moment, that can wait just a few moments while we try and get this set up and running nicely. Okay, so I think at this point is where we'll connect everything together. Like so. We're going to need some signals out here because this stretch is all one directional. We'll have a clearing signal there. And then it's just a case of putting a few blocks in along this stretch. That provides our trains somewhere to wait and to park. And we'll have two signals there to protect the junction in the merge point. We have a clearing signal there. And we'll put a clearing signal just there as well. Just far enough away so that if it does have to wait at this signal, the tail end of the train should not overhang onto the junction and cause any issues there. So we'll let these trains get in and out of their platforms. And in fact what we can do is this wheat train here, which is just departing the station, we can amend this line. So after Armstrong Freight Station, no, after Chase, this is where we are. If we head you back down... Oh, you've already opted to come back down this way. That's fine. So once these two wheat trains, three wheat trains, two wheat trains, if we can ignore this one, this train, what we want it to do is head up this way on its way into Armstrong. No, into Chase. So after Armstrong, please come that way. And that keeps you free of everything else. So that should help things run that little bit smoother. We can keep an eye on that and play about with it a little more if we need to. For now we want to get all these junctions reconnected incorrectly, so let's get that done. So you need to come straight over there, like so. Okay, this one might be a little bit more difficult to get in, so it seems... Oh no, it can get in there. Could we get it all the way across? Apparently not. But these two could run out a little ways and then merge in after this set of signals here. And if we send them across the entire tracks... That should allow all our trains to get onto our lines. And things now around here should flow a little bit smoother, at least in theory, but time will tell. Let's just quickly hop back down to Cloner and see if we've had any pickup on our tools yet. It doesn't look like it. We have some waiting to be collected. Don't know if we have any over here on the platforms yet. Doesn't look like it, but I'm sure that will change very soon. We've not had any delivery of tools yet into Vernon. Nor have we had any machinery dropped off yet. And I don't think there's any on any of our trucks at this point. No, but that's okay. As I said, it might take a few moments for everything to filter through correctly and the production to kick up into full gear. And I'm sure we'll witness that in future episodes. And on that topic, I think we'll end this episode here. I hope you have enjoyed the episode and you are continuing to enjoy this series overhaul. If you do have any comments, feedback and suggestions, then do go ahead and leave them in the comments section down below. 
Likewise, if you have enjoyed the video and you're still enjoying the series, a show of appreciation by hitting that like button is always welcome and very well received. Other than that, all that remains for me to say, as always, ladies and gentlemen, is that you take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now.